Every time we think we're exploring the last environment, we find a subsequent one. We don't even understand the boundaries of our own biosphere. It's only fitting that we're starting to look above our heads. Like 19th century naturalists casting out for distant shores, researchers have their eyes on a new frontier. They're searching high in the sky for signs of life. Our skies are teeming with life. Algae. Bacteria. Diatoms. Fungi. These organisms get kicked up from Earth by wind, volcanoes and storms. They can ride dust particles high into the upper atmosphere and around the globe. Biological surveys show the continents sneezing on each other. How far can these passengers travel? My team was actually measuring cells which most likely started on the continent of Asia. That study we performed showed that microorganisms can jump the largest gap on this planet, which is the Pacific Ocean. We do work in the stratosphere. We use high altitude balloons and we've got data now up to 36 kilometers. Here, 22 miles into the sky, it's cold. There's little water, no shield from the radiation. So life is hanging on for its return to the surface. At those altitudes, it's an analog for the surface of Mars. A microbe that's surviving in the stratosphere, you put it you put it on the surface of Mars, it doesn't know the difference. But if we travel back down a bit closer to home, we find microbial refuges. Clouds. These could be little oases in the atmosphere. There's water there. Also protection from sunlight. There are organic molecules, another word for food. This is a bacterium called Pseudomonas syringae. On the ground, it's an important plant pathogen. In the sky... It is the model organism in terms of ice nucleation. Ice nucleation, a first step in making rain or snow. At cold enough temperatures, water vapor in clouds will naturally form into ice. Pseudomonas syringae allows precipitation to form at higher temperatures, thanks to a protein on its coat that water easily latches onto. It lines those water molecules up like, uh, like Chinese checkers. An ice crystal forms around the bacterium, and when it's heavy enough, the ice and organism inside falls to Earth. As a microbiologist, I'm interested in how it's using this to further its cause. The microbe is carried by the precipitation it helped create. Perhaps an evolutionary strategy for reaching more plants. There are a lot of groups exploring that hypothesis. It's a really interesting possibility. Just as people have their own bacterial cloud, so does Earth a swirling layer in which microbes can move thousands of miles, spread genes to new places, and even influence the weather. We're just beginning to understand how these tiny life forms, making epic journeys above our heads, are shaping life down below.